Hello traders and welcome. In this video, we'll be talking about trading currencies on this Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation platform. And we'll just talk about some of the differences and some of the things that's good to know, uh, especially if you've been trading on another platform, any other retail brokerage, uh, they will be a lot different than what we have at Interactive Brokers. So our job is to make sure we're getting the best out of it. So I'll just highlight some of the things that I commonly get asked for or some of the things that we need to be kind of be careful about out, um, especially if you're looking at some of the information and trying to find what's the most accurate information. So the first thing I'll start with is this uh, portfolio window. So if you have this trader workstation loaded up, again, realize that, you know, every little window can be customized to the way of your liking. You know, I can make this trader uh, workstation look like uh, the way your uh, meta trader one would look like. So there's there's definitely ways uh, uh, to, to do that. And uh, again, there's options. There's little portfolio windows that you can can have at the bottom so in this in this one we'll just talk about uh this portfolio window let's say if you have your trader workstation where you have this displayed right the way i have it um one of the common uh, commonly asked question is about this bnl uh, change because um if you're holding a position uh let's say more than a day um you know this number might look a little bit off and the reason why is that this number is showing us um th what's the change since the prior close which again Again, uh, it will close uh, every day at midnight, and again, that's where the re the the balances will reset on this trade workstation. So let's say you could be a positive on a position, and overnight, let's say things reset and the price is retreated back. Now it, this is, will show you a bit more negative. So the way to really get the bad right information is by clicking the account and account window. Again, this is the best place to kind of get the most accurate information about your current positions and by your overall um, portfolio. So you can see that right now uh, there is a there's a dollar yen uh, long position and you can see there's an unrealized PL and you've realized PL. So notice that the PL over here will look a bit more different than here, but you should always go with what information is being displayed uh, over here in this uh, portfolio uh, section. So this is the first thing that, you know, always make sure that you're not going with this number, but we're going with the other number. Uh, the other thing, as you can see in the account window, it kind of displays uh, the real FX balances. Again, this is where um, this is a lot different than other retail brokerages where you will have some residual balances that get built up over time. And with these residual balances, that needs to be cleared out, uh, especially if the balance is more uh, significant. So, um, you know, the best way to clear out that is by right clicking on this and say, well, I want to close out non base uh, currency pairs and you click OK and then all that information then will get uh, get reset. So you can see right now there's not a whole lot uh, left. Uh, but notice that whenever you uh, exiting a position, there's always some stuff that's kind of left out here. So in this case, um, there's, you know, it closed out with a minus six is a very little tiny fraction of the position. So you can uh, click on this and you can actually click on adjust position. Uh, and then that way you'll be able to adjust the price of that. Um, but again, most of the times, uh, you know, your, your balance would not be big enough to, to, uh, to close it out. But whenever you see, uh, your actual balance and you see, uh, the balances are kind of, um, significant, then, then you need to go and cut, cut that out by clearing out the residual balances. Um, one thing to do note is that when you, whenever you're hitting that residual balances reset, um, it does incur uh, a commission cost so you don't want to be always clicking that button and looking at the uh, and trying to clear that out unnecessarily because you know you can see that the commissions can can add up there as well so that's the first uh that's that's one of the things that uh you know it's a lot different and again this is just a way interactive brokers work these residual balances that get built up but make sure you're always looking at your uh what's what's in the total usd and what's what what else is in there uh the other thing i always uh kind of talk about looking at this information is just to make sure that you have a two-step verification process so let's say you close out a position you know you want to make sure 
that everything is kind of reset within this um, uh, in in your account just to make sure that everything was executed properly. So always click on account window and always look at okay what's the liquidation value what's the uh, initial margin you want to make sure that you know your margin is not there um, making sure that all the currencies are actually uh, down to the US dollar so that way there's not a whole lot there's no surprises there uh, otherwise if you sometimes it happens where you close out a position or maybe something happened or a mistake can happen and then you don't catch it till you look at your account window and suddenly you find that okay Mel, I don't have a position in here but then my residual looks bigger or if there's anything that's that that looks not so obvious, then that will be caught up over here. So that's those are the two things that you know are, are very commonly asked, uh, especially if you're looking at it on your day-to-day -day balances check. Uh, the other thing, uh, it doesn't matter if you're using an app or if you're using uh, the the, the web-based. Uh, the way you enter a, uh, the, in your watch is the way you enter um, the 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 pair. You know, you always want to make sure that you're entering a dot in between those two currencies. So that way, uh, whenever you do that, it will give you this option. And this is another commonly asked question: Was well, should I select cash versus CFD? So CFD uh, again, it's a it's a, it's a derivative. Uh, it's not something that you want to be going for. Uh, make sure you're always picking up the ideal pro a cash position, and then you can just click OK, and then right away, then you will have the dollar cad that get, get added onto your onto your uh, system here. So a couple of times it'll ask you that, and then later on it will just kind of go by default. It will add everything in there uh, as uh, as an ideal pro so those are the uh, those are the most commonly things that you know you want to be making uh, sure of uh, again this this whole uh, portfolio window I will have all this information let's say the PNL and stuff uh, but like I said I, I personally don't really like this PNL window uh, or this portfolio window I would I would rather go to the account window and, and check everything here so everything else you can see is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, as far as the order entry goes, um, you know, there's, you know, you, you just have to kind of, kind of select what the kind of order types are using. Uh, so most of those functionalities are very similar. I think the, the biggest thing is how the information is displayed on this trader workstation that, that kind of comes in uh, a little bit different from other platforms. So, uh, those are the things that you can always, uh, kind of check your, if you want to pull up your account statement, um, you know, um, Click account and account management home. This will log you into your account management. Um, the other things I want to show as well, uh, is, uh, which is different from other platforms is your trade history. So by default, trade history, you have it for today, but you notice that right in the top here, show trades for, you can actually go back up to seven days. That's the maximum you can go in this list here. So I can click on seven days and it will just show me the information for up to seven days. If you're going beyond the seven days, then you need to log into account management in order to pull that information. But that information, again, it's not always the easiest to read. I personally don't love those statements that, uh, that, 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 you know, the inf information that's displayed over there. Uh, but always make sure that if you're looking for information, uh, as a seven day rule, you have all the information listed here. So maybe by the end of the week, you want to tally things up, you want to take a look at things, uh, you can do it from here. But I'll show you how to pull that statement if you want to go more than seven days. So let's say in this case, click on account and then account management home. This will actually log you right into um, your uh, account management. And this is where you can actually go in and, and download the statements. So a performance and reports, and you can go into statements. So under the statements, uh, you can actually download uh, activity report, um, you know, custom date range. Uh, let's say I want to go back for, you know, just one week. And right here, all the information will be displayed here. And as you can see here, um, you have the, uh, the, the, the PNL information, your trades information, but the information might not be the easiest sometime because it has uh, the way the the way the, it works, um, you know, you're you'll have uh, individual currencies that are listed out. So I will highly recommend just kind of going with the, the seven day on the trader workstation. But if you do want to go back into the time, you'll be able to pull that information from right here as well, which again comes in very handy. So um, these are again the common uh, commonly uh, asked things that uh, that we kind of go through for. And if you have any other questions that comes up. 
Um, you know, you can always reach out to us. Uh, you can email uh, us or me directly, onkit at mavictrading.com, and we can actually go through that. But, you know, realize that every single platform will be different. Information is different. The way it looks is different. Um, so, you know, every every platform has its pros and cons. Uh, but our job is to make sure that, you know, we are we are, we are trying to pull the information in the most best way possible and not to compare things because it might not be the best, but that's what we have, uh, the, the, you know, the, the pros and cons for each platform. And we kind of have to kind of go with it. Uh, thanks for joining and we'll see you in the next, uh, next, uh, IB video. Take care.